everyone. Welcome to Zen and Peel. Uh, my name is Tanya Peel. I'm the, the head teacher here. So today we're going to do another um, yoga for seniors practice. We're going to talk about balance today. Um, I've, I've taught many a uh, practice where I've gotten a request for balance, always wanting to work on balance for someone who is senior or a little bit um, older in life. So with that, um, we think about um, why. Why, why uh, does balance become an issue when we get older? So there's uh, many different things that come into play. Of course, if you have something like vertigo or a, a balance condition, uh, Meniere's uh, disease or, or anything like that, some type of, of ear, inner balance um, issue, um, balance is gonna be uh, something that Probably the practice of yoga is good for everyone, but it's probably not going to fix um, what's going on, right? Uh, with a uh, vertigo or something like that. Even myself, I've had bouts of uh, vertigo that have come into uh, my life, and I've had to um, get substitutions for my practices because I can't even stand up straight. <laughs> so I, I understand what that feels like. So um, anyway. So we come back to why is balance an issue when we get older? Well, if we're not active, if we've been very still for a long time, um, that you're doing yourself a disservice, right? You wanna be moving all the time, right? You wanna be using your body, um, connecting to your muscles, letting your nerves fire, um, visually seeing different things uh, so that you're, you're taking all this information into the brain, into the body, so that um, you stay strong, right? Um, it, that whole uh, saying of if you, what is it? If you, if you snooze, you lose it or something like that um, is true to a degree, especially when it comes to activity, right? You start to lose function in your muscles anyway. Um, as we get on in life, something called sarcopenia, which is just um, loss of function and loss of uh, muscle size and strength and all that sort of thing. So it's a practice that we need to bring back into our life. We start to um, bring weight training into our life, right? This is uh, very important to keep you strong when you need it the most is when you're getting older, right? Um, something else to think about is uh, visually our eyes are changing, right? I'm, I'm somewhere in middle life. So with that, my eyes have already changed. Um, I need reading glasses. So even that change of perception there visually with reading glasses, I find myself wearing reading glasses more because I like everything to be bigger and clearer, right? Without the glasses, everything's even still just a little little fuzzy. So I'm probably, even my, my far distance has probably changed as well, but not to the point where I need glasses yet, right? So it's just a little bit changed. And even that, I've noticed that I don't feel as strong in my balance as I used to be when I was younger. I come from dance, so I've had many a years of uh, balancing on one foot, one leg, you know, one leg up here, all these sort of things. You've, you've seen ballet, if not, you can look it up and, and check it out. So I've, uh, I've done much balance training when I was little, um, but it's different now because visually things are a little different. So even that I've noticed. So there's, there's a, some things, uh, of course that we need to do. A, we need to be active, right? We need to be moving every single day, right? Always uh, many different things, not just one type of practice. So you're outside doing walking or something like that. I mean, that's good, but um, you need to bring in a little bit more. So we need to come into some weight training, right? We need to pick up some weight to make the body strong. Um, we also need to remind ourselves that we need to do our yoga, right? Yoga is the practice of keeping the body loose and open. Um, outside of, of the deeper spiritual more interpretation of, of, or of, of practice of yoga. We're just talking about uh, some of the benefits that you get out. So it's, it's getting loose in the body, right? Practicing your yoga and keeping the body uh, functional, joints functional, movement, so you have all the ranges of motion, right? All, all the time. So we need to move in those directions right constantly um otherwise there here comes in that say again the snooze you lose thing again so we always want to be moving in all different types of modalities but especially strength you need to keep the heart good so walking is good doing your weight training also yoga um, all these things combined plus um, 
feeding yourself right, feeding yourself very uh, good quality foods, um, reducing the salt consumption, all that sort of things. Just eating natural foods, how, how they how they come, um, less processed, um, drinking your water, all those sort of things. Very important. Uh, some other things to think about: if you come to your yoga practice, you notice that you're always um, falling around, right? You might check on what type of mat you're using. You might be using an exercise mat. So this is an exercise mat. It's thick and it's spongy, right? Thick and spongy. So if I try to balance on here, it's like trying to balance on a marshmallow, right? Or on a piece of foam. So they actually have in um, the fitness world, these thick foam squares that they use to help strengthen up the little muscles um, to uh, help with your balance, which is good. I think, of course, there's there's benefit for those sort of things. But if you're coming into a yoga practice and you want to um, do a proper yoga practice, you don't need a spongy mat. This is for exercise, right? Um, maybe move that into your your fitness routine, your weight training. You need something that's a little bit more thick, right? You may be using the foam mat because it's more comfortable, but it, you come up to balance and you can't. You want to be able to feel like you're standing on the floor and taking your balance, right? So check in with what kind of mat you have or step off of the mat and practice on the earth. But you'll notice that any type of standing practice on a foamy mat, you're doing yourself a disservice. It will not feel the same as if you were on a regular yoga mat. You feel more grounded on a nice thick um, yoga mat. So there's lots of different brands you can look out there um, to find that are thicker um, to give you that um, extra help that you may need for the knees or just bring in something that you might use for the knees only, but make sure that your feet are on your yoga mat. Right, so those are just some little things uh, to think about. So anyway, so from there, we'll start to move into our yoga practice for today. So I brought in a few things. I have um, a rolled up uh, yoga mat here behind me. You can use a towel or something like that. And then I have two different yoga blocks. A uh, smaller one, I think this is about a three inch and a, and a four inch size, right? These are a little bit thicker, so they're not so squishy. So I can't really bend these. And they have some that will probably be uh, go either direction. It's a little bit less where they kind of bend and give a little bit or cork or wood where they don't bend at all. I like all. Um, these are just some that I found in a pinch uh, that give me kind of a balanced in between the two, right? Not so much give but not so hard like a cork or a wood block might be. And I also have uh, my chair. So when we come up uh, we'll move into using our chair for whatever it is that we may need, maybe extra balance or something like that too. So we're gonna get started uh, down today. So for those of you who find it challenging to sit on the earth because the knees are high, here's where a little lift of the hips is gonna do you some good, right? Because you might notice when you're sitting on the earth, the knees are very high. So if you sit with the hips higher, it kind of gets out of your um, hamstrings a little bit and glutes so that the knees can maybe relax a little bit, right? Just picking the hips up a little bit higher. So just find yourself a little bit taller and pulling the belly in. And just soften the eye gaze. So another thing that helps with balance is something called proprioception. So we feel, we feel ourselves move through space and time, right? Instead of having to see the hand move, right? Same thing with balance or just moving in general. If you can deepen your proprioception, you'll enhance your ability to balance and um, transitions of weight and, and all those sort of things. Um, uh, there's lots of benefit from keeping a, a, post, a proprioception. So we'll start here with closing the eyes, just moving from the crown of the head all the way down to the feet. So we notice how everything feels. Notice places of resistance. So what I mean by that is when you're holding on to something, like a muscle. 
muscle. Maybe you're holding the shoulders up, right? Um, just relax the shoulders down and try to lift the chest up a little bit higher and put the shoulders behind you. And pull the belly in. So engage a belly button, pull towards your spine. Connect to your center of your core, front and back. You may be doing something excessive with your feet or your toes, try to relax there at the knees or the hips. Maybe you haven't been sitting in this position uh, for a while. Maybe it's been a little bit for you, sitting down with legs and some sort of cross shape. So see if you can actually paint a little picture inside of your own mind's eye of yourself sitting in this space. Maybe a bird's eye view of yourself without using your eyes. Can you feel yourself with your spine tall, shoulders back, feeling your rib cage expand and fall with breath, feeling the legs cross. Feeling your arms resting on your knees. Can you feel, can you see this with your mind's eye? I'm just going to open the eyes and come into my hands and my fingers. Interlacing the fingers, push the palms forward. So I'm leaving my arms in line with my shoulders, right? Pushing the palms forward. So I'm getting a stretch of my fingers, my palms, my wrists, my forearms, a little bit of the arms. Then on an inhale, we take the arms up. Trying to keep extending out of the elbows, right? When we get older because of posture, right? Or inactivity or strength, we get a little bit of rounding of the back. So that's why we're trying to keep the chest up, work our posture. See if we can get our arms to go directly from the shoulders up in the air with this uh, same palms up, interlaced fingers. Bellies in. And then we release the hands back down to the knees. We just check in with what that felt like. And we're gonna go again. Interlace the fingers, push the palms forward. Up. And release. We'll take one more. Interlace the fingers, push forward, inhale. Remember your line, straight line forward from the shoulder and up. Start the exhale here and release. Very nice. So here we take uh, just a gentle twist. So all I'm gonna do is take my right hand and put it just behind my body. Let the fingers find the earth. And the left one, I'm gonna catch the outside of my right thigh. So here I'm gonna try to twist about my waistline to the right, yeah? So I'm gonna twist about my waist, my spine, and my neck. I'm gonna try to find both. So we take, prepare, left hand connects to the leg, right hand behind, grow tall. And we try to twist. So when you twist, make sure you're releasing the breath, pull the belly button to the spine. And come back to center. And we'll take the same thing, other side. So left hand now behind the back, right hand to the thigh, grow tall, push, twist, neck, spine, about the waistline, pull the belly button in. And we come back to center. So just for checking with our body, a lot of times, um, we, we have one leg that we favor, or we have one position that we favor. For me, it's right leg in front of the left, whether it comes from yoga or I'm right-handed, right-legged, probably a little bit of both, right? It seems like yoga always moves through uh, right leg on top for a lot of things. Okay, so change. So now I'm gonna have my left leg in front of my right. So of course, I move around a little bit because it feels so I've got, uh, I don't normally first, first uh, changing positions or coming down to a seated position do I take left leg in front. For me, it's always right. So everything feels a little different. The knee feels different on the left. 
right? I feel a different sensation there. Not good, not bad. Um, but definitely feel it. Hips a little bit different from left to right. It just doesn't feel natural for me. So I'm gonna spend time in this place. Because it's good for me to find balance from one side to the other. We're gonna do the same thing with the twists. We're gonna come back into the twist, not the hands, just the twist. So we're gonna move uh, towards the left first. So left hand behind, right hand catch outside of the left thigh, go tall. Give it a push. Remember, twist of the neck, belly button moving towards the spine, waistline. And come back. Other side. Right hand behind, left hand outside of the thigh, grow tall. Give it a push, belly's in, twist the head if you can, and waistline. And we come back. From here, I'm gonna keep my, uh, op, my, my not first choice leg in front. I'm gonna keep my left leg in front. I'm gonna add a little bit of neck space. Right arm reaching up, inhale. Catch left side of the head, exhale and pull. Pulling the right ear to right shoulder. So I'm not trying to turn the chin or anything like that. It's directly forward with the eye gaze. I'm just tilting, right? Tilting, I'm not dropping the chin. And release, left side, inhale, left arm up. Catch right side of the head, the same thing here. Without tilting the chin, we just drop the ear to the shoulder. Try not to dip, caught myself dipping there. And release. Okay, so from here we're gonna move into our spine. So first things we do here is we're gonna try a back bend. So a back bend, it's kind of like I'm sticking my belly out, right? So my back body is um, working and my front body is stretching. So from here, I'm just gonna leave my hands on the knees and take an inhale, push forward with my chest, drop the head back a little bit. And exhale, center. All right, so we're gonna move the other way. Right, I'm gonna move the other way. So the other way is my front body will be working and my back body will be uh, stretching. So the breath, we bring in. Exhale the other way, so like somebody. Oh. Right, rounded spine, chin, the chest. Inhale, center, or go right in to the first one, the back bend. Exhale, center, or go right in to the second one. Chin into the chest, pull the belly button to the whole front body into the spine. So we'll take one more, inhale, back bend. Oh, it feels good, exhale. Pull the front body to the back of the spine. And center. Okay, so we find hands and knees. Moving my block, uh, my, my mat off to the side. So in a box shape here. So this is where we normally find our cow and cat, which if you'll notice, it's the same as what we did sitting. So inhale, drops the belly just like a cow, right? Cow poses first, head drops back. Exhale, tuck in, front body move to the back, chin to the chest. Inhale, go again, make sure the fingers are spread out. Exhale, make sure the weight in your cat pose, this is cat, is on top of the hands, pressing into the earth. One more, inhale. Exhale. All right, neutral spine. So from here, 
from here, I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, lunge, lunge on the knee. So for some of you, lunging on the knee is probably something that doesn't feel good. So that's where you can come back to uh, your mat or your towel and just place under the knees. So I'm gonna try to flatten this out a little bit and not so round or high, right? I'm just gonna take one fold underneath my knees. And then right leg, and try to bring forward. So it's however you get the right leg forward. If you need to come up, move your right arm out of the way to get the right leg forward. Pushing into the hips forward and come back, release a little bit. And a little bending or a straightening of the front leg. Go again, push in here, do your best. And of course, you can use the blocks for your hands. My blocks are, are two different shapes. I didn't bring the other one into the play, but you can use blocks here for your hands if you need to. Just one more each. Push, inhale, and release. Exhale, all the way release. Find your blocks again. All right, so left leg's just gonna be the same thing. So whatever you need to do to get the left leg forward. And then we start moving into our breath. Inhale, push forward. And then exhale, just release, come back a little bit. One more, or two more. Inhale, forward. And back. Last one, inhale, forward. Inhale, in through the nose. Exhale, out. And then here we release, back in to the knees. So come down to sitting, whatever you need to do to come down to sitting. And you can keep your mat sitting on there, right, if you like. So here, I'm just gonna let my legs be straight and forward. So of course straight is relative. Maybe yours are straight and maybe they are not. So from here, take a breath and just start to fold forward. So you want the fold to come from your pelvis. So pelvis moving forward with the flat back. So only go as far as you can to where the back is flat. and release. I'm gonna move sideways for the next two, so you see here. Uh, so I'm not gonna worry about feet or anything like that, where, where they're pointed for the flex, but I'm just gonna leave the feet where they are. So inhale, grow forward, and forward from the hips, flat back, forward as far as you can go. And release. So what might be happening is you notice that your, your knees may be moving out of the way, right? What we're trying to do is not let anything move, just go forward as much as we can to where the legs don't move, right? So the one thing to think about with the legs, but not everything. So let's go again, breathe. From the hips forward, we go in, try not to let the legs move in or open out. And back to center. Okay. So right leg, we're gonna bend. So this is the seated posture with external rotation here with one leg. So you may notice, okay, I got this high knee again. Okay, then it's time to bring in either the rolled up towel again, or roll up your mat or your towel and place under the hips. I'm just gonna bring the block in. Okay. So here, external rotation on the right leg, left leg is long. 
Take breath. So same thing. Hips forward and forward. This one, I'm just going to take pause here. Flat back, pausing forward. Pull the belly in. Hold three, two, one, and release. Change legs. Right leg forward. Left pull in. All right. So again, working two sides, you'll notice uh, one side from the other what's different. Tell me a lot. Whoa. Anyway, as we practice yoga is to find a space and find balance, among other things. So we take breath. From the hips forward. Hold. For three, pull the belly in. Two. So next progression from here is to bring both feet in, right? Since we've already tried one and the other, we try for both, see what happens. So you may notice that the body starts to go backwards, right? Which is fine. So again, you can use your block or roll up your towel or maybe even a little bit of both. You know, put the block underneath the rolled up mat. And so we bring our feet as close as what's possible, right? And we're not trying to find uh, the bottoms of the feet squished together. We want to find a little bit of, of flexibility in our ankles so that we, we're we looking at the bottoms of our feet for this pose. So you should feel a stretch in the inner thigh and you may have a high knees here, which is fine. Yeah, which is fine. Just over time of simply sitting here, we have gravity, yeah, that um, will give you some pushing down, right? The legs weigh something. Gravity uh, also likes to push things down, so you know what I'm saying. So anyway, we simply sit here and find a tall spine. So just a nice tall spine. My hands, I'm just gonna let them rest in front, just somewhere around my ankles. Just hang out here. We'll stay for a nice count of five. Four. Three. Two. And one. All right. So we release. We'll come to standing. So whatever you need to do, we move the block out of the way, we move all the extras out of the way, and we find ourselves standing. So I'm going to stand with hip width uh, space in between my feet. Hands are going to catch my waistline. So take breath. On the exhale, bend into the knees, send the hips back, but lift the chest up a little bit. Pull the belly in, slightly tuck in the tail under, but not too much. So feel the weight in your feet, feel your quadriceps start to engage in your glutes, all right? You may even feel your spinal muscles. Make sure that you're keeping your belly button engaged. This is chair pose, modified feet. Hold three, two, and one. Inhale, expand the legs. Exhale, release the breath. From here, also release the arms. Inhale, draw the arms up. Eyes up if you can. Exhale, open the arms up parallel to the earth, palms facing down. So in line with your shoulders, right? Take a nice step out with the right leg, a nice step out with the left leg. Take breath, exhale, bend into the knees, let the hands come down, find the knees. 
So I'm not trying to go knock knees with the knees coming together, right? Trying to stay in line as best I can with my toes forward. So it's like a little bit wide-legged um, chair that we just did. Pull the belly in, lifting the chest, so I'm kind of sitting in the imaginary high chair, right? I feel my quadriceps, I feel my hamstrings, I feel my glutes, I feel my belly. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, we extend the legs, arms come back up. On the exhale, we turn the right leg, uh, the foot to the right. And from here, hands catch the waist. Let the hips push back into the left leg. The right hand come to the right thigh and the left arm up or just gently moving with us into triangle pose, eyes up. So if balance is a problem here, you can bring in the block, uh, your chair to help you uh, with the balance and just stay here maybe eyes forward if you don't like looking up at the top hand maybe the neck doesn't like it hold three two one inhale come up arms parallel to the earth again exhale we turn the right toes going right into the other side left toes turn hips kick into the right leg left hand down onto the thigh Inhale, go in, hold, three, two, and one, inhale, we draw up, arms parallel to the earth, exhale, we turn the feet again. So I'm going to stay wide and with my feet and just go from side to side, keep it simple, taking some poses. So right foot, we go back again. We turn to the right. This time we bend into the knee. Inhale, extend the arms out. Exhale, release the left hand to the outside of the left thigh. Pull the belly in, open the hips as best you can. Then from here, inhale, lengthen the right side, eyes up. Exhale, release hand, right hand, to the right thigh. So be mindful of the knee rolling in. Try to leave the knee pointing forward with your toes on the right side. Then from here, inhale, reach. Left arm up. Exhale, stay here or drop down to the elbow on top of the knee. Eyes up, forward or down, whatever works for you. Stay three, two, one. Inhale, we come back up, arms parallel to the earth, extend the right leg. Exhale, we turn the toes, going right into the other side. Inhale, turn the left toes out. Exhale, bend in to the knee. Right hand drops to the thigh, inhale. Extend out of the left side body. Exhale, release left hand to the knee inhale lengthen the right side body stay here or exhale drop down to the elbow hold three two one inhale we come up arms parallel exhale extend the front leg and turn the toes forward catch the waist step all the way together we just take a moment to check in, see what everything feels like. So I have my feet all the way together. Hands are dropped down by my side body, so my thickety, or just a ready pose if you want to think of it that way. Pull the belly in. Try to feel yourself holding this shape or this pose. Notice your feet, if they're very unsteady, Notice the rib cage expanding and falling. Are you still connected to your center, pulling your belly button to your spine? Okay. So here, we try a little balance. So if you don't have a chair, of course you can use the wall. I'm gonna grab the chair. 
and bring my chair in. Okay. So here, I'm going to move the knee to the front. Right hand, catch the waistline. Inhale, pick up the right knee. Just bent leg, knee up as high as you can. So notice what you're doing. If you're leaning all the way over onto the chair, uh, you're not engaging your left side, right? So start with maybe just the toes. Let the weight move into the left side of your body and see what that feels like, right? Then try to, your best if you can, make sure that the foot in the floor, you're kind of spreading the toes out a little bit, right? Catch the air, feel the foot grounded. And then your hips, you notice that your bum is, is sticking out to the back, right? Maybe a little bit too anterior uh, tilted with your, with your pelvis. Tuck under here, engage the glutes, engage the quadriceps, engage the hamstrings. Extend out of the knee. Now, inhale, pull up the right knee, hand catch the waist, right? So I'm balanced on my left side. Hold three, two, and one, release. Good job. So from here, I'm gonna face my chair sideways. The right leg, I'm gonna release behind. So I'm trying to go as straight as I can with my right leg behind me. My left toes are pointing directly forward. Not left, not right, directly forward. I have the toes spread out on the left foot. I'm tall in the spine, shoulders back and down. So from here, engaging my glutes, I pick up the leg with a little lean forward. So this is a warrior three modification. So I'm trying not to be so heavy with my hands, trying to engage my calf, my foot on the left, glutes, hamstrings, quadriceps. I'm also engaging the glute on the right. Focus, belly in, three, two, and one, release. Now let's take the other side for the balance. Switch the chair, facing forward. So we check in with the feet, right? So we first start with uh, engaging uh, the knee on the left and putting the weight over into the right side. Start with the foot on the right, spread the toes out, catch as much earth as you can and make sure that the toes are pointing directly forward and the heel behind. Then notice the tilt of the pelvis, tuck under, engage the glute, lift out of the body. Then from there, inhale, left knee up. Remember, not trying to be so heavy. Catch the waistline with the left hand. Not so heavy on the chair. Hold the three, two, and one. Release, we take a turn. Left toes, behind. So try to move with a straight leg. My right foot, the toes are directly forward. Knee and toes point the direction, same direction. My, my toes are spread out, catching more earth. Then from there, tall in the spine, pull the belly in, we pick up the leg. Inhale, little lean forward. Warrior three modification. Hold here for three. Focus. Two. And one. Release. Very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my chair for this uh, next pose. I'm gonna turn the chair to face forward. Then I'm gonna sit on my chair with the split legs. So I'm, I'm going to want to turn my hips as well. Okay. So this is a modified full lunge. So I'm all the way back to where my whole thigh is uh, supported by the chair, my right foot flat to the earth. If you notice your right foot is not touching the earth, you can simply put the foot up on a block and just see what that feels like for you. 
time. So I'm trying to turn my hips towards the right. So the right leg uh, probably going to be bent unless you have some some nice um, flexibility or space already in the hip flexor. No big deal, it's just practice. So we're trying to have the front leg be the bent one and the back one be the straight one. And we're just gonna hold this stretch. We'll stay here for three, two, and one, and release. And just make your way over to the other side. So I have my whole thigh on the left supported, turning my hips, trying to get my left foot flat to the earth. It's not all the way, but good enough. Back leg probably bent, but maybe you can straighten the leg. And we hold this stretch. We stay here, belly in for three, shoulders back and down, two, and one, release. I'm gonna come back to a sitting uh, place with our chair. And I'm gonna sit all the way forward to where my sitting bones are just kind of on the edge of the chair. Cross the right leg on top. So this is a nice stretch already for the glutes, hips on the right. Take breath if you can fold forward, go right ahead. As far that's comfortable for you, no pain in the knee is what we're trying to not feel. And just keep going, wherever's comfortable for you. Stay for three, two, and one. Gently make your way back up. Change the legs. Same stretch other side. You can stay here or start to fold wherever you can. Remember, we don't want to feel pain inside the belly. Take breath. And we go in. There we go. This side is tighter for me. I'm a right sided person, so there you have it. Left side, a little bit different sensations. And you just fold wherever you can go. Hold here. For three, two, and one. So you can make your way back up. Releasing the left foot down. Releasing the arms. We'll take some breath here. Inhale out and up. Exhale the arms out and down. We'll go again out and up. Inhale. Out and down, exhale. Pull the belly in, hands at the heart. Take a breath here. Exhale, release the breath. Just close the eyes, take a few moments here. Okay, so we have now put ourselves in a chair eyes closed or softened. See if you can use your proprioception again to see yourself sitting on this chair or whatever you have. Notice your legs, your feet, your toes, your hands, your spine, the neck, the shoulders. Nice easy breath. Don't work too hard. Just work on feeling your body, breathe, feeling your body in this space. Open your eyes, always a pleasure to lead you through your practice. I hope this practice served you. We worked a little bit of strength today, some balance some space working through our hips until next time keep moving right keep your strength and practice 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 all my love namaste